Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Now this is the second video in this x-ray critique series, so if you guys are liking it, then I'll be making more and covering the rest of the anatomy. So today I'll be taking you through critiquing three different hand x-rays using the Paceman image evaluation criteria. So hopefully by the end of this, you should be a master at it. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so when we look at a hand x-ray, what are we meant to look for? Well, in this case, it's quite simple. We're really just looking for the phalanges or the fingers on the tops over here, so the fingers. We want to also look for the metacarpals and the carpal bones. You're going to be seeing a little bit of the radius and ulna, but in this case, it's not too important because that's mainly in the wrist that we're interested in. So fingers or phalanges, metacarpals and carpals, and obviously around just to ensure that we have nothing cut off. That's kind of what we're meant to look for in the hand x-ray. Now thinking about our critique, the first um, letter of our paceman critique was uh, positioning. So that was P for positioning. Okay, so how is the positioning for this hand x-ray? It's actually quite good. There is, doesn't seem to be any excessive rotation of the hand itself and you can tell by roughly the equidistant um, distances between the um, metacarpals over here. The fingers are very nicely uh, placed on the board and they're quite flat. It doesn't look like they're domed or sort of uh, in any different position. The thumb is in a relatively good position. Sometimes you can get the thumb really close to the hand, which you don't really want, or sometimes it, they can just really put it out. And this is sort of in a normal neutral position. So the fingers, the palm of the hands and the thumb itself seem to be in a relatively good position, no rotation, no tilt, we can see again for the tilt is it rotating left or right. We sort of squint our eyes and it seems to be along the vertical horizon. So in terms of positioning, I'm happy with that, quite good. The next thing is the area. So is enough of the area or region of interest covered? And in this case we say it is, because on the top we can definitely see the top of the fingers, on the sides there's nothing cut off, and on the bottom we have the carpal bones and a little bit of the radius and ulna, which ideally makes a good hand x-ray. Now in terms of sort of centering and positioning, generally we want the centering point to be at the middle knuckle or the third metacarpophalangeal joint, MCPJ. And it looks like they've basically done that in this case. So area is covered, there's nothing cut off in particular on the sides, so happy with the area, quite good. The next thing is collimation. So following on from area, is there anything to do with the collimation that is too tight or too broad? It doesn't look like there's much going on beyond the confines of the fingers in this case. So the collimation isn't too wide and it's not too tight in the sense that it's cutting anything off. So appropriate collimation for the rigid of interest, um, in this case, is just the sort of the left hand. So collimation, quite good. The next is exposure. So exposure, again, looking at how the KVP and the MAS looks. And the KVP kind of relates to contrast, okay? And the MAS relates to the quantum model, or basically the noise model. Okay. So how is the contrast in this image? It's actually quite good. You can tell um, the difference between the soft tissue quite well and the actual bone itself. You can look at the bone texture in a really nice manner. So all these sort of different textures within the bone over here, or we'll the bone texture is really nicely visualized. So I'm happy with that. You can see the bone cortex in each and how it, it differs to the uh, the, the medullary cavity and the soft tissue surrounding it. We can see the edges of the soft tissue quite nicely with the background. So overall, the contrast levels are quite good, adequate penetration, and there doesn't seem to be much quantum model in this case. So even zooming in, maybe there might be very slightly in these sort of denser areas, but it's definitely within normal limits. If anything, I'd say the image almost looks too nice. Um, so maybe they have um, used a relatively higher MAS to achieve a exposure that is sort of really nice looking in this case. So that's exposure done. The next one is marker, okay? So is the correct marker placed? Usually we put the marker sort of in this area as they have here. Now this looks like it's an upside down sin sign and I believe sin in this case is referring to left. So the correct marker is placed on the lateral side not covering the region of interest or the anatomy. And this is of course a left hand. I think if we were to critique it, it would, we would say that it's actually flipped downwards. So they would have to sort of flip it um, uh, in the correct orientation. So it's not upside down. But other than that, no other marker would be required. And it seems to be in the okay position apart from that thing that I mentioned. Okay, so marker is good. Now aesthetics, aesthetics. How does the image look overall? 
honestly, the image looks really good. Um, there's good exposure, there's no rotation or tilt, the collimation is quite good. So aesthetics is almost 10 out of 10 here. Now the other A, remember, we said is artifacts. I don't really see any artifacts in this particular case. Some notable artifacts on hands are, for example, rings. Someone might have a sort of wristband over here that they haven't taken off that's uh, still quite high. Could be a watch, things like that. But in this case, it looks like there's no artifacts, so I'm happy with that. The last one is name. And again, of course, because this is anonymous reasons, we say that no name is or identification is present for anonymous reasons, and therefore that one is our freebie. Okay, so overall, very good x ray, um, very nicely positioned, great exposure, no pathology that I saw in this case. So we can say that in terms of the pathology, it seems quite normal. Um, and other than that, um, x rays very well done. So that's the critique for this first case. Now let's move on to number two. Okay, so now this is our second case, and it looks like it's an oblique left hand. Um, if I would guess, I would say it's a child, because you can see these growth plates over here. So I'm not sure exactly how old the child is, but, you know, uh, it is a child, uh, nonetheless. Now, for the critique of this x-ray, the first thing is the position. Okay, so how well is the position, given we know that this is probably an oblique projection. Now remember we said for obliques, you don't want to rotate it too much, otherwise you get the fourth and fifth uh, metacarpal starting to overlap, and it's kind of what's starting to happen over here. Now, to some degree it's okay, but generally when you start to see the third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal overlapping each other, you probably run a little bit too far. Apart from that, you also have the fingers that are starting to overlap. So you see the fourth and fifth finger is overlapping um, pretty much in its entirety, and the second and third finger, or the middle finger, have overlapped in the distal portions. So that's not ideal. Um, ideally, we get the patient to keep their fingers straight and then rotate their um, hands sideways in the oblique position. But in this case, probably because they're a child, maybe because they have some pain, they couldn't really keep their fingers nice and still, and they just kind of turned it up, and the fingers were just sort of hanging around. And so that's not ideal, not good positioning because some anatomy is overlapping. If, for example, there are fractures under there, like an avulsion fracture, you can't really tell uh, because of the overlapping of the bones. So ideally, you know, positioning is done, but not really ideal, okay? What about the area? Is the relevant area covered? Well, we have the top of the fingers, the sides are not cutting anything off, the thumb is there in profile, we see the carpal bones, we see the metacarpals, and we see a little bit of the radius and ulna. So in terms of area covered is quite good. Uh, we have all of the anatomy that we need, um, nothing, nothing is cut off, but again, the positioning is leaving a, a little bit to be desired. So area done, and now let's move on to the next one, which is collimation. How is the collimation in this case? Well, it's actually quite good, okay, because we can see the edges of the in the, in, of the image is there. The top is about there, the side there, and the bottom here. We see that sort of silver lining effect on the bottom. So the collimation is not cutting anything off. There's, it's not excessively collimated. It's not excessively collimated out. So there's not um, too much irradiation to the patient. Again, the thing is going back to position. It's not in the best position, and it's also slightly tilted, not in the vertical orientation. Okay, so collimation done. The next is exposure. Okay, how's the exposure in the in this case? Well, the first thing I notice is that the whole thing looks a bit white, okay, and a little bit grainy, particularly in these areas and these areas. If you sort of zoom in and have a look there, okay, so that would typically suggest that there is a relatively low MAS that's been used, um, and maybe not enough penetration. Um, occurring. However, because it doesn't look too contrasty, I'm hesitant to say that the KBP was low. Perhaps just the MAS was low and there's some post-processing that needs to be done to improve the contrast um, that way. Otherwise, other than that, some of these images, if you get them off the internet, they it's the graininess that you see and the low quality in the image that you see is probably just a result of the image itself being post-processed so many times on the web, being downloaded and uploaded, that the quality of the image itself is bad, not the actual original x-ray that was bad necessarily. So all in all, exposure could be improved, maybe a slight increase in MAS and a post-processing which would have made it look a bit nicer. Now the next is marker. Okay. Marker, so obviously we said this is the left hand, um, the oblique, so there is no marker in this case, so that's not ideal, but if there were, we would put our left marker somewhere in this case, usually in the lateral area, somewhere that's not covering the anatomy. Next is aesthetics, aesthetics, 
Okay. How's the overall aesthetics of this image? Not really good, right? We see mostly because of the poor positioning, um, rotated a bit too much, the fingers are not sort of straight and overlapping. Exposure could be improved. It's, it's a little too bright. I think it could be improved in those areas. Otherwise, the area collimation was quite good and the marker was obviously missing. So poor aesthetic overall, but it is what it is. And lastly, N for name. There was no name or identification present for anonymous reasons. So hopefully that made sense. I don't really see any pathology in this particular case. If there is anything in the fingers, it's hard to tell. The thumb looks okay. Again, um, these are not sort of fractures. These are growth plates, which means they will fill out later. I'm just telling us that this is a x-ray of a child. All right, that's it for this one. Let's go to the next case. All right, last case. Now there's a lot happening here and hopefully you see that it's not the most ideal x-ray, but let's first start off with telling us of what are we looking at? So it is, in this case, it's a right hand, okay? And it's in the lateral position or, you know, trying to look like a fan lateral where we ask the patients to do that, like the okay sign, and we do the x-ray that way. So a bunch of things not really okay with this case, but let's go through our critique. And the first thing was positioning, okay? So how is the positioning? Is there any rotation or tilt? Well, there's not much of a tilt. It seems to be within the vertical axis of, of the image. Um, the positioning in terms of tilt, I would say, in terms of the metacarpals, they seem to be quite overlapped, maybe slightly not in this particular case. But usually what I look for is in terms of if the hand is tilted in the correct way or not, is to look at the wrist. Now, ideally, in a good position, you should also get a good lateral wrist as well, where the radius and ulna are actually overlapping each other. Now, in this case, it's not slightly hinting at an under rotation. They could have rotated it more this way, which may or may not have fixed the uh, metacarpal area. The thumb is in an okay position, okay, but the fingers are definitely not. Um, it looks like this might be the fifth finger, fourth, uh, third, and second, or index finger. Ideally, they would have a position like this. Now, the fingers, the, the index finger and the thumb don't have to be touching. It could also be like this, depending on the patient comfort. But in this case, I'm assuming either because of arthritis or because they had some pain in the hand, they couldn't really do that, and that was the best that they could do. Um, just a pro tip on the side, if you have patients like this that struggle with getting their fingers separated, what I like to do is you know, try to separate it myself and then ask them to hold it in a, in a still position. Or you can sort of jam in some sponges in there and last second just sort of uh, pull it out and ask them to hold it as still as possible. So positioning, um, not really the best. We have some you know, very close overlap between the second and third finger. The fourth and fifth fingers, um, seem, the fifth one seems to be in an okay position. The fourth one, it's hard to tell because of the bad quality of the image. But if I was to zoom in on this, you know, I can zoom in here, but it's, it's hard to see because of the poor quality. I don't know whether the condyles were overlapped in that case, okay? And similar with the condyles of the second and third finger there, okay? So not ideal positioning, uh, but that's what we have here. So done, but not ideal. The next thing is um, area, okay? Is the area covered? Well, definitely everything is covered in here. In this, uh, in any case, you don't have anything cut off from the fingers and the hand perspective. Again, from the tip of the fingers to the base of the wrist itself, which would just be a little bit below the radius and ulna. So area is definitely covered um, uh, and nothing is cut off in that, area, in that sense. Next is collimation. In this case, I would say the collimation is quite excessive. Okay, you have a, a lot sort of on the top, you have a lot on the side, um, a lot on the back, and definitely you don't really need any more than that. So all of this would be a bit um, excess, um, and they, they could bring the collimation quite down uh, to aid in that potentially image quality and the radiation that we're giving to the patient. So collimation done, but not really ideal. The four way collimation could be improved. Centering seems like it's okay. It looks like the centering, I would guess, to be there. Ideally, it's a little bit higher at the level of the, the knuckle. So that would be the centering there, okay? The next is exposure, okay? Now again, this looks like a really pixelated and bad image. This is likely because it's an image on the internet that I found. 
um, that is not ideal in terms of its quality. Now, if we had the original quality, I kind of have to ignore the blurriness that we see here. Now, apart from that, uh, in terms of the KVP and contrast, well, there's a fine balance between knowing if something is high contrast or whether the patient has some osteopenia, aka the patient has low bone density. Now, I've made a separate video on osteopenia, which I'll sort of link up there, You can, uh, and I'll link down below if you want to know the differences. But one of the ways, for example, is to look at the thickness of the um, cortex with relation to the medullary cavity. Very thin cortex over here, which is probably telling me this patient has some level of osteopenia or low bone density, um, perhaps in combination with some arthritis. Anyway, putting that aside, the exposure, not putting it aside because it's related to exposure, but that kind of tells me why the bone is not as dense as I would have normally expected it to be with related with relation to the soft tissue. Okay, So if it's low contrast, it's not necessarily because the KVP set was high. Maybe it was high for that anatomy or region of interest. Okay, So maybe slightly high KVP, but that's sort of relative to this case. Okay. The MAS, again, do I see quantum model? I see a lot of blurriness and poor image quality. That could be because of the MAS. It could be that it's just been a highly processed image on lines, but I'm just going to go ahead and say potentially low MAS in this case. Okay. So exposure done, but not really ideal. The next is marker. Okay. So we said that this is a right hand. Um, and so we would expect to have the right marker, you know, somewhere in this area that would uh, coincide with the appropriate collimation. But they have their marker sort of down here. Now we can see that this is a right marker and ML is just the radiographer's initials. If we were to flip this around, this would have the right marker be in the correct orientation. So it's not flipped, it's just sort of rotated upside down. Even if it was flipped, however, it wouldn't be in the ideal position. Ideally, they would sort of bring it up and place it somewhere there and close their collimation inside to side to make sure that they're not opening up the collimation because of the marker, which in this case, it looks like they might have. In general, this is a pretty big marker, so I would try to maybe source a smaller one, at least for this hand x-ray, but that's the situation there. So marker done, but not really in the ideal position. Next is aesthetics, okay. How does this image look overall? Terrible, <laughs> okay, so not really good. Positioning is not really good. Um, we see some overlap, as I said, in the fingers. Um, ideally, the wrist should probably be a little bit more overlap, the radius and ulna. Um, now, in terms of rotation or tilt, there's not much tilt going on, maybe a slight bit of rotation improvement. Uh, collimation could definitely be improved. Um, and exposure could be improved as well, just to make it a little bit more appropriate for that uh, region of interest. So aesthetics done, not really ideal. And lastly, name. There is no name or identification for anonymous reasons, and that one is the freebie there. Okay. And in terms of pathology, again, what I thought is probably just some osteopenia. If there is any fractures, it's very difficult to tell on this x-ray. Um, because of how blurry it is. But other than that, some osteopenia, low bone density, it seems like that's the only thing we can see here. So again, hopefully that made sense. And I hope now that you're a master at critiquing hand x-rays. All right, that's it for this one. Give it a like if you found it useful. And I do hope that you have a better understanding of what to look for and how to critique hand x-rays. If not, then just refresh the page. Now click here to watch my video on how to critique a chest x-ray, which you don't want to miss out on. See you there, stay curious.